Our scripture today is Leviticus chapter 23, verses 33 to 44. It is a special time of year. Um, it's harvest time. And that means that it is time for my favorite biblical feast. Of the many feasts that we are commanded to enjoy and partake in in the Bible, the Feast of Sukkot, which is going on right now, is the most fun, as far as I'm concerned. And so I want to read to you now about the Feast of Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of Booths. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of the seven month, and that's in a lunar calendar, so that's October 5th, the lasting, and, and lasting for seven days, there shall be a festival of booths to the Lord. The first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall not work at your occupations. For seven days you shall present the Lord's offerings by fire. On the eighth day you shall observe a holy convocation and present the Lord's offerings by fire. It is a solemn assembly. You shall not work at your occupations. These are the appointed festivals of the Lord which you shall celebrate at times of convocation for presenting the Lord's offerings by fire, burnt offerings and grain offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings, each on its proper day, apart from the Sabbaths of the Lord, and apart from your gifts, and apart from all your votive offerings, and apart from all your free will offerings, which you give to the Lord. Now, on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the produce of the land, you shall keep the festival of the Lord, lasting seven days, a complete rest on the first day, and a complete rest on the eighth day. On the first day, you shall take the fruit of the majestic trees, the branches of palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees, and the willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall keep it as a festival to the Lord for seven days in the year. You shall keep it in the seventh month as a statute forever throughout your generations. You shall live in booths for seven days. And all the citizens of Israel shall live in booths so that your generations may know that I made the people of Israel live in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Thus, Moses declared to the people of Israel the appointed festivals of the Lord. Word of the Lord. So, we're going to be looking at Leviticus for the next couple of weeks. And Leviticus can be tricky sometimes, but... I find that one thing that helps with Leviticus, since it's continuously giving us instructions, is, you know, maybe we should try some of those instructions. Because it's kind of like reading, you know, an origami book just cover to cover without any paper in front of you. By the end of it, you're like, hey, there's a bunch of this incomprehensible stuff. Doesn't make sense, doesn't apply. And so I. I'm going to need some volunteers. Now, I want to be clear, this is a, a complete challenge-by-choice situation. Everyone can, nobody has to. So we're not going to egg anybody on and say, come on, do it, but we're also not going to um, prevent anyone who wants to come forward and say, oh, I don't know if this is a good thing for you, all right? So if you want to be involved, I'm, I'm very excited to have you. I am going to need help, but if you... If you don't, there's no pressure. So uh, to start with, and I'm not going to tell you what you're doing, but I, I need someone who's, uh, who's uh, gregarious and exuberant, one of, one of the theater type people who likes attention. Can I get, is, is there, don't pressure anybody, but if you want to do it, you can. 
All right, c c come on up. So uh, I, I, I need you to stand in the middle, if you would. Um, so, I have, um, I have some supplies that I think you're going to want. Here you go. Here you go. And you'll need, um, you'll need some of these. Okay, so grab those. Um, here, you might, you might need some more. Um, lay them out if you would. It's caught. Oh, it's caught? Okay. There There's a little of that. All right. You ready? No. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I'll come back around. So. So we're in Leviticus chapter 23, right? Yeah, fruit and veg, that's good. Okay, so Leviticus 23, um, the Lord spoke to Moses, yada yada, yep. Uh, let, let me go over here. Um, so, on the first day, you shall take the fruit of the majestic trees. Have you, have you got the fruit of the majestic trees? Now, now the rabbis have debated this at some length. Um, the word for fruit in Hebrew is singular. So I need you to just take the one fruit of the majestic one. Okay, <laughs> she's going with the banana. The, well, actually, uh, the traditional choice has been the, uh, the citron, um, which, which grows wild in Israel. Um, the majestic, apparently, is also similar to citrus. Oh, there you go. Okay, good. We're on the same page. Citron's a lot like a lemon. Um, so hang on to that lemon, um, and you can put the other fruit of the less majestic trees down. Um, Take the fruit of the majestic trees. Um, take the branches of palm trees. Have you got, have you got a palm tree? Can somebody help her? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> we, need, we need the branches of palm trees. Okay, so take those. Um, and then uh, take the boughs of the leafy trees. You might, you might still need to help her. We need the boughs of the leafy trees. Good, good. Um, and the willows of the brook. The willows of the brook. This is good? This is good? Okay. Uh, and you shall rejoice before the Lord. Go ahead. You just, you've got... <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. The, uh, the, traditional, um, the, the traditional thing to shout on Sukkot, which it doesn't say it here, but it's just, it's come up, is Hosanna, which means God save. Or in Hebrew, you'd say, Hoshana. Can you try that? No. No? I bet, I bet you can give me a good Hoshana. Hoshana. There we go. Yeah. So, so you, you have to rejoice before the Lord with these four species. Um, the, it, and uh, what, what's often happened, because, you know, often when we're reading the Old Testament, the wealth of the rabbis can, can help us. You know, they understand their scriptures better than we do sometimes. And so they've started to say, well, what we should do is take the palm branch, which they call the luvav, and wrap it with the citron and the myrtle. They've decided the leafiest one is the myrtle and the willow. And then, uh, and then you can have like a kind of thing to wave. And you'll have a, th and you'll, 
And so to celebrate before the Lord, they just kind of wave it in every direction. And they just kind of go, oh, we got to go north, and then we got to go south, and then we got to go east. Every morning, every evening, during the Feast of Sukkot. So that's pretty easy. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Um, but that, that is the easy part. It gets, it gets trickier from here. Um, you rejoice before the Lord for seven days. You shall keep it as a festival for the Lord's, as a statute throughout your generations. And you shall live in booths for seven days. What does it mean to live in a booth? Um, can, I get, can I get some strong men? I need, you guys can sit down if you want, or you can stay up. It's, it's your choice. Alex, I, I've got you. Linwood, okay. So, um, a booth is, or, or, or sometimes they use the word tabernacle, um, it's, it's a, a small temporary dwelling place. It's not a permanent dwelling place. And the rabbis have decreed that it's to be no shorter than 40 inches tall and no more than 30 feet tall. And you have to build it uh, every year. You, so I think you'll find, if you go ahead, um, that this is about the right height. <laughs> okay, so we're at four feet. So we're, we're doing good. Um, but in order for it to be a booth, it can't be one wall. We need at least two and a half walls on a booth. <laughs> I, uh, I dressed down for this, if some of you were wondering why I wore a polo shirt. I, uh, I want to be able to help where I can. That's good. Aaron, do you want to grab this with me? <clears throat> okay. Um, all right, so where do we want to put our booth, y'all? Go right here. Do, do we want to go vertical or, or horizontal? We'll go vertical? Okay. So go ahead and tip that up. Oh, oh the, roof, the roof is coming next. There's not going to be a top yet. We've got to have three walls. All right, so. Um, yeah, go ahead. Aaron, have you got that? Okay. All right, so got some hardware. Uh, does somebody know how to use a drill? Can I get a, can I get a hand here? <laughs> Now you can make your booth as, here, you, you take over for me. I've got some grommets there. You can make your booth as intricate or as simple as you want, but you have to make a new one every year. You can't just leave it up and be like, oh yeah, that guest room, that's my booth, right? It's gotta be. <clears throat> yeah, so go ahead and set that up. Thank you all very much. And the idea, the idea is to remember that the people of Israel lived in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Are you all right over there? It's not, I, okay. So, again, this is, this is latter interpretation by the rabbis, but they're, they're pretty smart. They've said that for the roof, the sides of, this is called a sukkah, feast of Sukkot. Sukkot means multiple sukkahs, and a sukkah is a booth. Um, so th for the roof of the sukkah, it has to be made of natural plant materials, right? But the sides of the sukkah can be made of anything. So usually, if we're looking for natural plant materials, look no farther than what? The four species. Look to the lavav. Yes, absolutely. So uh, while they're putting that together, um, here, I've got uh, a little step stool. 
we uh, Now the largest of the four species is of course the palm. And so palms are particularly associated with the, the feast of Sukkot. Um, yeah. Now, the question of just how much is enough comes up, right? I mean, I mean, how, wh what's, the, what's the requirement, you know, what's the, for those of you that are teachers, you know, will this be on the test, does this count? Um, and, and we have decided that the, the trick for the roof of a sukkah is that it has to provide effective shade because you're supposed to be being shaded. Is it coming down? Good, keep working on it. You guys will get it. <laughs> you know, sometimes the sukkah can be a symbol of our own vulnerability. God calls us to live in these, these improvised temporary shelters for at least one week <laughs> out of every year. Uh, do we have a chair we can, we can bring up? Do you want to pass me one, Aaron? Yeah, let me give you a... Yeah, folding one would be good. Now, it might be that somebody in the community, I've always said that if, if you're having trouble getting something to stick, you need duct tape. Check under your seats where the, where the red hymnals are. There might be someone in the community that has, has the materials we need in order to make sure this sukkah... <laughs> If you see a hymnal on the floor, that's a place where we've made room for some duct tape. <clears throat> All right, so here's, here's some more chair. Now, the, you'll notice, and I'm sure some of you that are volunteering are asking the question, is that enough? I've got one, one leaf on there. It, it has to provide effective shade. And so what does effective shade mean? Oh good, we've got the duct tape coming. Go, go ahead, help them out. They need help. Effective shade means that you have to know you're being shaded. So it has to be enough to protect you from the heat of the sun, but you also have to notice there's sun coming in through it. So it can't be a complete covering. And ideally, it should be open enough that you'll be able to see the stars at night. You know, because you want to be able to sit in your sukkah and reflect on the stars. Okay, are, are we about done? Have we created it? We got some duct tape going. That's good. That's good. Now, remember, this is a party. So it would be very strange to just have a bare plywood sukkah. Um, you want to de decorate your sukkah festively. Have you all got it? We, yeah, we, we've got enough up there. We, we don't want to get too much or you won't be able to see the stars. Co come on out here. Can you help me with these? <laughs> now, we, we, we want it to feel like a party because it is a party. And there's very live debate. It's actually going on now. This isn't like Middle Ages debate. This is like right now, there's a question for people who still celebrate Sukkot every year in Judaism, whether or not you can use Christmas lights on your sukkah. And so one elder rabbi has said, if the lights were manufactured for the purpose of worshiping Jesus, then you don't get to use them because Jesus, you know, isn't, isn't the true God, Adonai, that we the Jewish people worship. But another rabbi said, okay, but like, these lights are manufactured in a sweatshop in China, and, and they're just trying to make some money. It's, it's for purely economic purposes. So if you want to buy some lights on December 26th on sale, do it. So, uh, so go ahead and string up some lights, and we'll, uh, we'll be well on our way. We, got, we having fun yet? All right. Now we get to the important part. Because if you'll notice, and, and are you with me? Have you got your Bibles open? We're in Leviticus 23. It, 
it does not say build a booth. That's not what it says. What does it say? Live in a booth. The Hebrew word is yeshav. It's a beautiful word. I love the word yeshav. It's the root of the word yeshiva. It means to, to settle down and to dwell. And so we have to ask the question, what does it mean to dwell in a booth? And some people have said, maybe it means I can't leave my booth. I have to get in the booth and I have to stay in it all week. Some people have said, maybe it's, it, it's not so much that I have to stay inside the booth, but I, I'm not supposed to go into a, a, a permanent house. I'm supposed to stay out of permanent residences for a week. But generally, it's been pretty agreed upon, you know, in these latter days, with people being weak in faith, that the most important part of dwelling and settling is sleeping. Well, really, two things. Sleeping is one of them. So this, this sukkah will, will do for that purpose. Uh, would you mind? Yeah, just go ahead and take a seat to dwell in the booth. Oh. Yeah. And we need here so you can sleep if you want to. Oh, thank you. You, you got to be well equipped. Now, in addition to sleeping, well, Let's save that. Uh, just, just rest yourself, Don, if you would. Oh, good. Have, have some majestic fruit. <laughs> good. Um, how do you, how do you feel? I'm ready for a nap. You're ready for a nap. Good. This is good. Um, so, God told us to do this, or, or rather, He told the Israelites to do this. And so I think it's worthwhile to have this experience and reflect upon what it means. So can you use some feeling words, Don? What are, what are some feeling words you're having? And, and don't, don't feel like you have to censor it. Just, just tell me what you're thinking. I'm very grateful for this shelter. Uh, <laughs> it feels very luxurious. It's so bountiful. Um, it's shady from those hot lights up there. Shade, good, um, good. I feel safe and protected because... You, you feel safe? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Let's give Don a round of applause. Keeping me awake, though. Thank I you very much. I can't get any sleep, though, because there's people talking. Oh, what? I can't get any sleep because there's all these oh. people talking. Oh, would you, would you, we can leave you alone if you'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and stand up. Thank you very much, Don. You've been a great sport. Now, that, the sleeping is one half of Yashav. Anybody have any guess what the other half would be? Praising. Praising? praising? Well, well, the praising's up there. That's not a part of Yashav. That is something that we definitely want to do on Sukkot. The other important thing, if you're really dwelling in a place, you've got to be able to eat there. And so you can sleep on the floor, but to eat, you know, we really... Yeah, we, we got we to gotta be ready to eat in the sukkah. You're going to eat some willow branches, huh? <clears throat> uh, so I need, I need a volunteer for some eating. Can, can somebody eat and tell me how they feel in the sukkah? Kyle, yeah, you'd be great for this. Come on, Kyle. So I, I got, these are some crackers. I stole them from the fellowship time. Um, all right, Kyle... Uh, Kyle's going to sit down and have a snack in his sukkah. Here you go. And, uh, and just, just pay attention. Just get curious to what you're feeling. Don't pressure him, y'all. He's, he's, he's marinating. He's figuring it out. Feels like a dinner. It feels like a dinner. Okay, tell me more. Like a sit-down, normal dinner. It's just, it's just very normal. Yeah. There's nothing unusual about this. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I heard your mom say, not at our house. Okay. You feel safe? You feel good? Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me about God's faithfulness 
If you reflect upon God's faithfulness in this circumstance, how, how do you feel about that? Like, I'm faithful that, like, he's going to protect me under this and stuff. God's going to protect you in this sukkah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good. Thank you very much, Kyle. You can keep those if you want, or uh, you don't yeah. have to. <laughs> uh, here, I'll, I'll put this back away. So, there's this question that rises, right? Because um, we, we recognize what the text says, but there's this importance to what, what does that really mean to us? Like, what's, what is meant when it says in Leviticus, everybody has to live in booths for a week and you have to wave these things? I wonder if the, the four species isn't really just a, a celebration of all of the abundance of stuff that grows, right? Because Sukkot takes place in the autumn, and there's another festival, the Festival of Weeks, where you take like the one sheath of the first food that grows, right, and, and anticipate God's prov providence. But at Sukkot, he just says, just take all of this stuff, just take all the good fruit and all of the palms and, and have a good time. Um, and so I wonder if it's not as important to take each of those four species as just, you know, have the abundance around you and have, have a hurricane party, if, if I can appropriate that term from a culture that I am learning. And then he says to live in booths for a week, and we have these regulations about, you know, 30 inches and, uh, and, and how high and how wide and how long. But you eventually have to ask the question, did God just command us to go camping? <laughs> um, right? Are, are we, we're just supposed to go hang out outside for a week. And it's particularly interesting, you know, I'm going to pull up the text again because it says that the first day and the last day are to be complete rest. They're proper holidays. You Sabbath on those days, on the first day and the last day, which this, uh, this year is October 5th and 11th. You do no work. In between, you do no work at your occupations. There's a distinction there right? It's not a complete Sabbath. The implication is it's okay to build a fire. It's okay to cook. It's okay to roast marshmallows, right? What is not okay is that you do what you normally do to make money. You just, you gotta just take a break from it and party for a week. It's important because I love you, says the Lord. Right? Just remember that. Take one week out of your life. Well, a week and a day. Well, kind of sort of nine days because it starts on at nighttime, right? And then goes through the, and then ends at the next nighttime. So October 4th through nightfall on October 11th when you see three stars in the sky, you just need to just relax and get out of your house and, and forget about trying to make things nice. Just live in a booth and party with your friends. Because, of course, this would be a very small sukkah. I didn't want to go crazy. I didn't want to have too much, but you wouldn't eat alone on Sukkot, right? You want a big table with your whole family there. In fact, there was even a Chabad that did a destination Sukkot in Orlando. So they put up a large public sukkah um, walking distance from the theme parks. And they had Jews come from all over the world to come and, and celebrate Sukkot and go to Disneyland. Um, because that's appropriate behavior on Sukkot, as long as it's, you know, in those middle six days, that you, you know, you want to be just kind of having a good time and celebrating God, but you got to come back to the sukkah for your meals because you want to dwell in the sukkah and remember that. Now, I've done this before. I, I gathered my friends together when I was in college, and we took a week on the quad, 
and we uh, celebrated our own Goyim Sukkot, our Gentile version of Sukkot. You know, we used tents and stuff to, to make it easier because it's not about um, being a labor. But it's become an image for me, and I hope it will be for you, of the way that Leviticus can work and the opportunity that's offered to say, God's not just a theory that we practice by believing the right things, but God is a practice that wants us to do real things that cause us to reflect on who he is. So I want to close us in prayer. Lord God, thank you for your teaching in this section of Leviticus. Thank you for your appointed feasts and festivals. Help us to increase in understanding of these things, these things that we feel sometimes don't apply to us, these things that sometimes feel outlandish. And thank you especially for this community that's ready to laugh and engage with me and do something a little bit different to try and see the goodness of your word. Amen.